Hello, and welcome to Game Gems. Today, we're going to take a quick look at a, an extremely useful, if underused and occasionally misunderstood, class of the Godot game engine, the node path. Node paths are, as the Godot documentation states, a pre-parsed relative or absolute path in a scene tree for use with node.getNode and similar functions. It can reference a node, a resource within a node, or a property of a node or resource. You've been using them all along without even really knowing it. Anytime you pass a string path to get node or use our good friend the dollar sign to create a reference to a node in the scene, you're using a node path. Or at least you're using one under the hood. Godot takes the string you give it and internally converts it into a node path class that points to the node you provided the path to. And since strings are hard coded, if you later move that node, the string is still pointing to where it used to be at the time of instantiation, and you now have a broken reference that needs to be updated. Fans of that other engine rightfully point out that creating an object reference that always points to the object in question can be far more convenient, especially when you can just drag and drop the object itself from the scene tree to the inspector slot. If only Godot could do such a thing, we wouldn't have need for things like the message bus that I talked about in my previous video, am I right? But if we continue to read the documentation for NodePath, we discover something interesting. Specifically, that, in the editor, NodePath properties are automatically updated when moving, renaming, or deleting a node in the scene tree, but they are never updated at runtime. Whoa, does that mean what I think it means? Yes, yes it does. Let's see how to do it. Open your project and navigate to the script that you want to add a link to. That link can be to a node within the existing scene, or it can be to a self-contained scene that has also been dropped into the tree. Add a variable of type NodePath to the script and mark it with the export notation, then save your script. Once your script reparses, you'll see your new export variable waiting to go. You can either click the Assign button and select the node in question from the dropdown, or you can drag and drop the node from the scene tree. And here's the kicker. If you move the linked node in the hierarchy, the export variable automatically updates. You'll never break your link references again. If you add exportable node paths to the top level of your self-contained scenes, you'll be able to access any node outside of the scene from within it as though it belonged to your scene itself. Before we go, a quick note about design. One of the most common questions I get about the topics I cover is, well, why would I use X over Y? Which one is better? For example, should you use the trick I just explained instead of a message bus or standard get node calls? It's understandable to want to know the right way to do things, but unfortunately, in the realm of computer science, what's right often depends on who you're asking, and even when you ask them. As I noted to one user in the comments of my previous video, there was a time, again, depending on who you ask, when the singleton pattern was frowned on and widely considered bad practice. Now, both Unity and Godot make such heavy use of them that they're built into at least one of those languages as a feature and are pretty much guaranteed to show up in the other one nearly every time you're working on a professional project. As a programmer, it's your job to decide what's right for your project and why. And with a few exceptions, in the end, the choices absolutely do not matter. You'll discover which ones do matter with experience or a little forethought. And as you develop said experience, that forethought will come easier and easier. That's why we make the big bucks, after all. If you found this tip useful, feel free to like and subscribe for more Game Gems. See you next time!